if you are interested in the French landscape, especially the French river, 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 <laughs> I can't see the damn word. But you've interested in the French Riviera. <laughs> Hi there, friends. Welcome back to my channel. So the first thing I will say is that I am a bit sick. I've been sick for the past few days. So excuse me if I do not come across as myself. But I really wanted to hop on here and just shoot this video because... Honestly, I read this book a while back now and I just want to review it before I completely forget about it. Um, but I also noticed that our family has gotten a little bit bigger, so I really just wanted to shoot this video. So this book, actually, I read as part of my reading challenge for 2019. If you want to learn more about my challenge, um, I will leave the video where I announced the challenge um, down below in the description bar. So let's get into this book. So this book, which I will insert somewhere, as you can see, it's the Little Britain Bistro and it was recommended by a friend. I had finished reading A Thousand Splendid Sons and if you've read that book, then you know just like how heavy it is and I just you know I just was asking people for recommendations I wanted something easygoing something light something that would not like require too much emotional and intellectual investment because guess what sometimes I like reading those kind of books because a reading is supposed to be fun too you know um so my friend recommended this book and i read the description i looked it up and it felt like the right book for me at the time and if you've been on my if you've if you've watched my vi my videos then you know this is not like a typical book that i would read but still i i enjoyed it i loved traveling to france i loved just like taking in the landscape, taking in the different characters and just how Nina George writes, you know, this German writer who's been living in France for a while, but you know, she has a specific style of writing and I quite enjoyed that. Why not? So this book is actually surprisingly light. And I say that because when we meet the protagonist, she is in the process of committing suicide. And she is committing suicide because she is in a loveless marriage with a very abusive man. Um, and just, she's got a lot of regrets. Her life is like, she doesn't um, find any meaning in her life. So yeah, so this is how we meet her. But it is surprisingly light. It's not heavy at all. I think it's light because of how it is written, but also... You know, as much as, you know, it is about a book about a woman who, who tries committing suicide and then follows the events of what happens after she is not successful. Um, I don't think that is the focal point. The focal point is more of, you know, trying to find meaning again, trying to find yourself, trying to find love, trying, you know, just like a good all coming back to yourself kind of story. Um, so it's not heavy at all. And I thought that when I first read the few, um, pages, but trust me, it's not. So I would call this book like a romantic comedy. Can I call the book that? Well, I just did. Um, just because it's got all the elements of a romantic comedy, you know, like light and cheesy in places and enduring and that kind of thing um and i did not mind it at all i did enjoy the fact that the protagonist was like the 60 year old woman who is trying to find herself so falling in love back in love with herself but also like finding love and i thought it was quite interesting because you don't read like in-depth you know stories about older characters falling in love you know and i found that quite refreshing so on top of these um, older characters falling in love, you know, Miriam and this artist man that she falls in love with. There are you know, other love stories that are speckled in the book. And it just, it's nice to read about, you know, it's nice and cute to read about different people falling in love in different ways. And I don't think, I mean, it's predictable. Some of the 
relationships, all the meetups, all the hookups. Some of them are predictable, but some of them are, are nice um, and surprising. And I didn't see them coming, so that's, that's wow. cool. So if I didn't say this already, this book is based in France, based um, in a place that is at the French Riviera. Riviera. Um, yeah, and I think Nina does such a great job of capturing like the personality, the temperament, the mood of you know of this little town. Um, oh my God, she also does a great job of describing the food. So I was it. I so at the time I was actually going through this lifestyle change. <laughs> And I tell you, it was really hard reading this book while doing that. It's like, it it honestly comes across, like, some parts comes ac- come across as, like, a recipe. She really goes into detail, into the taste, the smell, the texture of the food. It was really, really hard. So if you're on a diet, maybe don't read this book. Honestly, it was really, really difficult because I was just, yeah, I would just get like random cravings just because I read about a certain meal um, they were making, you know. The one thing I found surprising was like this mysticism, magical realism thread throughout the book. It just, you know, I was not expecting it, so it came as a surprise. But the more I read, I mean, it's very, it's a very, very light thread. Um, so if you're not into magic realism, you will not be put off. But it kind of made sense because the town itself is, you know, it's a very old town. There's like a lot of folklore and stories and, you know, things that, you know, go around. So it makes sense actually to include this element so some of the issues i had with this book i felt like listen i really loved the different characters and like i said i loved how you know the book is speckled with all these love stories that was fantastic but i found some of it just like mm, unconvincing and unbelievable and maybe that's just because she had too many characters in the book and there was not enough time for us to get to know each of the character and under and and i understand in a book you can't you know you can't go into all the characters but i just felt like i just felt like some of them were just paper thin i didn't i didn't believe them i didn't believe her when she was telling me about their lives or their stories you know and again that's just maybe because there were too many characters um and maybe because i found them so interesting so i really wanted to know um i really wanted to know more about them the other thing I had an issue with this book, I felt like it just dragged on way too long in certain parts, especially towards the end. And I understand like she was trying to, um, so in the end I understood that she was trying to give like a non-typical ending to this kind of story because like I said, it can be predictable in parts, but in a, n- not in an irritating way, but in an endearing way. I'm like, oh, I saw that coming. Um, you know, but towards the end, I was just like, okay, wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. And that's just because she's trying to give you like an ending that's not predictable. I appreciate that, but mm, she could have kept it shorter, you know. Um, so friends, that was my book review and I'm so happy that I read this book. Thank you so much to my friend for the recommendation. I'm actually looking to read um, The Little Paris Bookshop, I think it's called, by the same author and traveling to France again sometime soon. But I'm so happy that I'm doing this challenge because I would never have picked up a book like this. So yay to that. Um, If you wanna check out my challenge again, it's linked in the description bar below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you will like this video. And if you are new, please do subscribe. Uh, My voice is going. All right, guys. Thank you. See you in the next one. Bye.